Hello, my name is Dr. Tasha Kainz. I'm a founder and CEO of EVV Global Institute. And today we talk about my favorite botanical licorice. We're going to talk about applications for EBV, broad spectrum applications for other pathogens and also other conditions, and also uh, some contraindications, some dosaging uh, issues, and <clears throat> when to talk to your doctor about it so you keep it safe because it's a little bit tricky with licorice. So in general, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, licorice is the most powerful, broad, non-specific antiviral botanical readily available. And it is one of the most beloved botanicals in China. It's been used there for hundreds of years. Uh, it has many active constituents. Many of them are flavonoids. There's even quercetin. The most studied and the most antiviral uh, in terms of what we are looking at is glycerin. And so... <clears throat> Glycerin in studies shows uh, to irreversibly inactivate herpes simplex virus, inhibits and grow its growth. And I suspect the same can be taught can be said about EBV because it's a it's a herpes virus as well. It also interferes with the early step of EBV reactivation uh, replication. Sorry, not reactivation replication cycle. Very important. Possibly in studies, it, it's been suggested possibly attachment, replication, penetration, or cell entry. So replication is possibility as well. Uh, one of the things that glycerin does is it decreases NF-kappa B. NF-kappa B is an inflammatory protein that we carry. We produce more of it if we have junk food, for example. And so there's a lot of uh, botanicals, culinary spices, nutrients, foods that can decrease in F-kappa B. And of note, glycerin is one of them. So it's very, very important because um, when uh, your virus is looking for a place to replicate, it's going to hijack in F-kappa B. So the more in F-kappa B you produce, the more opportunity for the virus to actually hijack this in F-kappa B and replicate. Very, very important. Of note is the fact that uh, NAC and selenium also decrease in F-kappa B, and I have uh, a separate video training for each of them uh, as well. So what else does it do? Uh, flavonoids in licorice also show uh, that they can decrease xanthine oxi oxidase. It's a specific free radical created by EBV. And EBV creates massive amounts of oxidative stress. And this is sometimes why people have achy joints, achy muscles, brain fog, you know, brain is on fire, uh, fatigue. That is from oxidative stress. So our focus is uh, on bringing that down and bringing more antioxidants. And so is this any strategy to decrease uh, free radical damage the insult of free radicals uh, from EBV is game. Also, there's two particular flavonoids, glucuronic acid and glyceratininic acid. <laughs> Sorry about that. Spelling is difficult. Uh, both in synergy seem to decrease viral toxicity. That studies as well. And then the fa there's the famous interferon gamma. That's one of the key antiviral mediators in the human body that you have. You can create that and that uh, licorice both uh, helps create you create that for you. It also is central to the elimination of viruses from the central nervous system. Nervous system, brain, very important. And then there's a laundry list of different constituents in licorice, including quercetin, which have been shown promising results in um, studies on cancer, uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer. Very interesting. Now, other, other benefits that are of note. So <clears throat> what you need to know when you work with licorice is, you know, you always want to talk to your doctor, especially if you have any medications. Licorice can change the blood pressure, um, and so the benefit of licorice in our community in particular is that it's anti-inflammatory as well. 
that it can nourish the gut, uh, that it can protect the tissue when there's gastritis, there's infections like H. pylori. We're going to talk about it in a moment. So it's very soothing, but it also is very soothing. It's like a tonic for your adrenals. And when you come into the situation, um, when you, how do I word it? When, when you become one of those people with chronic EBV presentation, so it's a chronic condition for you, to arrive at this place, you have probably taxed your adrenals for many years. Uh, even if it's a shorter period of uh, your life, but it's been very intense in terms of stress, you know, what happened in your life and also stress of the EBV itself um, and the stress of anxiety <laughs> of having EBV. All that is really taxing for adrenals. So in our community, it's more universally uh, expected that the adrenals will or underperform, they will be tired. So we're talking about adrenal insufficiency. Some of your doctors may have called it, you know, and told you that you have um, uh, adrenal fatigue. But adrenal fatigue, medically speaking, is is you know you would be hospitalized. You wouldn't even you will be horizontal all the time. <laughs> So adrenal insufficiency is frequent in our community. And what licorice provides is a little buffer, a little oomph, different from uh, caffeine. It doesn't stimulate you like caffeine, but it provides that buffer for adrenals. It's just very soothing and healing. So oftentimes in our community, it's just like, ah, oh, I feel so much better on licorice. So it has all this beautiful nourishing component of it. With that, if you have high blood pressure, you should not be taking licorice because it can elevate it further. And this is a great opportunity to work with a clinical nutritionist because that's what they do. They will help you with lifestyle, dietary changes, stress management to bring down that high blood pressure and create a normal health, you no know, wellness. So you have normal blood pressure and then you don't have to worry about that. Um, what else do I want to share that is of note? Ah, uh, amazing antibacterial uh, effects of licorice. Uh, of note, H. pylori, um, especially uh, antibiotic resistant H. pylori, that responds very well to licorice. There are strep, staph, mycoplasma, mycobacterium, sorry, mycobacterium, uh, species that are also susceptible to licorice and even fungus, candida albicans, imagine that is sensitive to uh, to licorice. With that, when uh, your doctor is using licorice for your gut, for gastritis, H. pylori, ulceration, uh, bacteria or fungal infections, you will be using the glycerid, uh, the glycerated licorice DGL. Uh, you don't want to use the regular licorice because actually studies suggest that DGL is much more effective for these issues. Now, if you use DGL, one reservation is it will not have any effect on your EBV. It does not have antiviral qualities. That constituent has been removed. So, Keep that in mind. What else? Oh, interesting things. It can also have memory enhancing effects and can inhibit liver damage. And interestingly, it can help modulate estrogen. Increase it when it's low, decrease it when it's high, especially exogenous estrogen. And this is exogenous estrogen is the... Uh, um, a human created chemicals based on petroleum, you know, plastics, uh, pesticides, all this creates too much estrogen. This is not the real uh, normal healthy estrogen. This is a toxic estrogen, a, a exogenous estrogen. Um, the one thing in the book that I actually made a mistake um was that I put the dosages in capsules and completely forgot to add other options. <laughs> That's one thing 
I did not realize until the book was published. So let's go over available dosage, dosages and available forms. And again, do not try to use licorice on your own, even though I list it here. Talk to your doctor, your practitioner, make sure that this is safe, test drive it. And this is only for education. This is not me providing therapy. So licorice is available in capsules, tinctures, solid extract, powder, tea. Capsules typically come in 400 milligram uh, cup, uh, dosages. You can do two capsules two, three times a day. Um, powder, five, 15 grams a day. Solid extract, uh, one eighth of a teaspoonful once or twice a day. Tincture, 30 to 40 drops, three to four times a day earlier in the day. Uh, all of this is early in the day. You don't want to provide licorice later. You don't want to be overstimulated. Tea, you can start with one large cup and then uh, drive it to two, three cups. Also, not, not into the evening. Now, with this, these are very aggressive. So you want to work with a practitioner. Uh, you want to test drive it. You want to take it slow. Uh, you want to take breaks from it. If anything happens, and anything happening could be your heart rate, your heart palpitations are, you know, showing. Uh, you feel like you're too agitated, too energetic, wired. Uh, you could feel anxious. All that means that, you, you know, your blood pressure is too high now. It's actually irritating the body. So there are some people that are hypersensitive to licorice. So this is why starting with tea is great to see how you respond if you don't have any high blood pressure, but that's rare. So with that, let me see when you definitely shouldn't take it is when you are on uh, diuretics, medications, antihypertensive medications, also a, a, an herb called digitalis. You should not mix those two. If you are on insulin or hypoglycemic medications, if you use licorice, you have to monitor your blood sugar really, really carefully. So Probably you want to discuss with your doctor if you even want to go there. Um, one thing of note is it's a potential. So, and this might also be applicable more to people who have certain uh, gene snips, like I believe comps, when you can over-metabolize over -metabolize, uh, supplements or medications. Uh, so the deal is that... Uh, a licorice inhibits an enzyme, P453A4. It's a major human drug metabolizing enzyme. So theoretically, if you are on a medication that is running through this enzyme, licorice might potentiate uh, many medications. So it may actually, <laughs> may actually find that that medication works even stronger. So that's why you want to always run these these things with your doctor. So voila, I would say uh, if we zoom out, licorice is safe for majority of people. Tea made out of licorice is very soothing and even tea can have benefits even at that level. Uh, so I would say start with tea and see how you feel. Run everything about licorice with your doctor before you go into capsules or tinctures. That's very important. And never use it with high blood pressure. But with hypertension, your goal is to get rid of your hypertension. That's the goal. Uh, and that's, like I said, nutritionists do it for a living. They can help you with it. You know, you will be healthier, safer, better for your heart, better for your body. Um, and then you can enjoy uh, the benefits of licorice. I hope you enjoyed this training and it's helpful and I'll see you on the next one.